On Friday, the Democratic-led House voted on and approved the bipartisan infrastructure bill, the one that already passed in the Senate over the summer, and in the process, they likely just killed their budget bill. Now, this was voted on in opposition to the squad, so they held strong against this bill, understanding that without the leverage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, you're not going to be able to get Mansion and Cinema on board with the current version of the budget bill. But first, let me go over the uh, the numbers here and the details. So this is from the New York Times. They break down who voted for it and who voted against it. So as I said, near the beginning of this process, I think I said this back in September, in all likelihood, Democrats would be able to get at least a few Republicans on board if progressives continued to oppose this budget bill. And that indeed was the case. So even though they only had 215, they needed 218 to pass it, they got... 13 Republicans on board to support the infrastructure bill, just as Democrats did in the Senate. 19 Republicans signed on in the Senate to that bill. Also showing you how terrible this bill is. You're not going to get 19 or 13 in the House uh, conservatives to vote on a bill, on a Biden bill, unless it actually helps them in some way. And the way it helps them is it helps their big corporate donors. So this is why you're able to, uh, or they're able to get those votes. Meanwhile, Against it, as I said, six members of the squad and the majority of the GOP caucus as well. So right here, Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, and Rashida Tlaib all voted against the budget bill, again, with the understanding that there's no point passing this, or sorry, voted against the, the infrastructure bill, with the understanding that there's no point passing that infrastructure bill without the budget bill, because they're not going to get the support in the Senate. Now, a little more here from New York Times. They say, well, progressives... While most progressives then agreed to vote for the bill, members of the squad did not view the centrist assurances as good enough and chose to stick with their position of demanding both bills pass at the same time. Ms. Bush said that passing the infrastructure bill alone jeopardized our leverage on the broader bill, which includes monthly payments to families with children, universal pre-kindergarten, health care subsidies, and a four-week paid family and medical leave program and endangered progressives' ability to improve the livelihood of our healthcare workers, our children, our caregivers, our seniors, and the future of the environment. Now, this is a, a very important piece of this, because there's a lot of misinformation out there being spread by places like CNN that the infrastructure package actually helps to combat climate change, which is simply not the case. There's a reason why these two bills were going together. So AOC actually broke it down fairly well here on Twitter. She says here, yes, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill, the budget bill, are not written as two distinct bills, but interlocking policy. The infrastructure bill's climate benefits only unlock if the budget passes. So if the budget bill gutted, uh, is gutted or dies, we may have just locked in U.S. emissions and thrown away our biggest chance to combat climate change. Stakes are now higher on Build Back Better passing. The cost to replace every lead pipe, so she goes through an example here. The cost to replace every lead pipe in the U.S. is 45 to $60 billion. The infrastructure bill only gives $15 billion. Without the Build Back Better bill, many communities historically denied clean water will continue to be denied that clean water. Build Back Better has lead money for disadvantaged communities. We must keep pushing for Build Back Better. I want to protect our party from the disappointment and collapse in turnout from communities like mine that occurs when we tell them we did things we didn't do. We shouldn't promise all lead pipes will be fixed if that is not the case. Some will, most won't. We must push for Build Back Better. So this has been a issue. I mean, this specific issue uh, has definitely not been uh, touched on. To be honest, I wasn't even aware of this until I, I saw the breakdown here. But yeah, apparently... These two are so interlocked that even when it comes to the funding for lead pipes in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, the majority of that money isn't there unless the budget bill also passes to support the replacement of those lead pipes. And that's just one example. Of course, when it comes to climate policy, there's a massive investment from the budget bill into climate that is not in the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which again shows you that the Progressive Caucus, led by Pramila Jayapal, deciding to vote for the infrastructure bill before the budget bill it they just lose all their leverage i mean to fight this long up to this point to hold the line to not support the infrastructure bill with the intention of forcing mansion and cinema to vote for the budget bill uh, to, to lose that all now i don't understand what, what the point of this is. i mean 
maybe they think that cinema and mansion don't care at all about either bill and they're fine if nothing passes i feel like that isn't the case considering there is large corporate giveaways in the infrastructure package i would imagine their corporate donors do want that infrastructure bill to be passed so i think if you push long enough they w eventually would have to give in but it's gotten this long and once again the progressive side caved but this is also it's important to note here this is always the issue when it comes to these sorts of fights certain people are fine if nothing at all gets passed i mean the gop is perfectly fine not a single lawmaker in the republican party supports the budget bill so not a single republican supports paid family medical leave not a single one supports lower prescription drug prices not a single one supports expansion of medicare universal pre-k just showing you how uh, how terrible they are in terms of their focus on being willing to not pass anything so they're fine they're perfectly fine if nothing gets done but on the other hand when it comes to progressives they want something passed they want something done they want some help out to people they're not fine if nothing gets passed so this is the eternal battle when it comes to these two sides fighting be it the conservatives whether they're in the democratic party or the gop and the progressives people that are progressive actually want some progress made even if it's not you know the entire package that they want but still at some point you have when it comes to these sorts of battles at some point you have to be willing to lose you have to be willing to have nothing passed in the effort of getting the agenda that you need passed and when it comes to climate there is no negotiating on climate you need to do everything possible to pass in, in terms of supporting a a climate agenda in renewable energies and moving away from fossil fuels if that real investment isn't there there's no half measures that, that are going to you know uh, satiate the climate crisis you have to actually push that as far as possible now a little more here this from uh on that issue in particular from common dreams the bipartisan infrastructure bill is not a climate bill the advocacy group friends of the earth action noted over the weekend pointing to a recent analysis showing that the measure contains up to 25 billion in handouts for the fossil fuel industry which has lobbied aggressively against the budget reconciliation package Pramila Jayapal, the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, said Friday that she secured a commitment from the House Democratic leadership for a vote on the Build Back Better Act, quote, no later than next week, but it's unclear whether corporate-backed conservatives in the House will drop their objections and support the bill. If it clears the House, the bill will then move to the Senate, where an estimated one in four lawmakers hold investments in the fossil fuel industry. I just don't know how this budget bill is going to pass. I don't understand under what scenario what is going to make these uh these conservatives in terms of mansion and cinema what is going to make them jump on board with the budget bill and that's just the senate there may not even be enough votes in the house there is still a a conservative contingent in the house that was in rejection of the progressive idea of passing these, both these bills at once so it, the budget bill may not pass either and then what Giving up all leverage to support this budget bill just strategically makes absolutely no sense. When you push this long and then just give it all away, what was the point of the fight?